Welcome, fellow sciencer. It is I, Aaron Freeman, not a scientist, but a sciency optimist, here to elevate your humors with yet another tale of science inspired awe. The 13th century Mongols were very sciencey. Their training, then and now, involves the kinds of precise, repeated physical movements at which our brain's cerebellum excels. Their generals devised psychological manipulations that any university professor would be proud to write a grant for. And the Mongols afford a stellar measure of the possible for us today. We begin with our beloved sibling, Dr. Ahmad Sadri, professor of sociology at Lake Forest College, and his assessment of the Mongol army. Probably it is the greatest military force that this world has ever seen. I read that you have not seen a Mongolian until you have seen a Mongolian on a horse. The Mongolians would put infants on horses before they could walk. They were horse trick riders riding on the backside of the horse or making tricks around the horse as the horse is galloping. Every single Mongolian was able to perform those very efficiently. They were able to shoot very accurately uh, from horses backwards and forwards. They could be running away from the enemy and then turn backward and shoot their enemy very accurately. These Mongol equestrian forces moved in such a clip that nobody could even believe. They crossed great expanses of barren lands. The soldiers would carry uh, dried meat and dried, uh, let's say, something like yogurt with themselves that they could eat as they, as they moved. And for liquids, they would open the veins of these ponies and they would drink the blood of the ponies as they travel. And so sometimes they would travel at great speed with these ponies for 48 hours without dismounting. Their numbers were always less than the numbers of the armies that they defeated. The Mongols used intelligence operations, misinformation campaigns, they knew the lay of the land very well before every attack. So they were extremely advanced and extremely smart. They picked their battles very well. And so they were not this emotional kind of horde uh, swarming. I asked you about the, the hierarchy within the swarm, within the Blitzkrieg, the hierarchy of the soldiers. And I compared it to the Viking berserkers. I asked, were there people at the front lines who just didn't care if they died or lived? And you said... Every Mongolian soldier was a berserker. Every single one in confronting the enemy was, didn't think about uh, his own safety. Partly because of their warlike mentality, but partly because of the new organization that Genghis Khan brought to the Mongolian soldiers. He revolutionized the Mongol structure. He created the decimal system of groups of 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Each one of them had a leader. And this transcended tribal divisions. He divided the uh, various groups that they had integrated. So the solidarity was not tribal. It was very much like modern uh, military solidarity. He created a law called Yasa that would severely punish cowardice in the face of the enemy, lying, or any kind of uh, disreputable behavior. So the soldiers knew that if they uh, do anything other than uh, think of the victory of the group rather than their own self, that they would immediately be executed in the most horrible fashion. Two of the greatest generals of Genghis Khan, one was called Sumede, the other one was called Jebe, they led a small expeditionary force of only 15,000 soldiers once they conquered Iran without really breaking a sweat, and uh, they had the whole land in their position. Uh, Jebe and Subede come to Genghis Khan and say, would you give us permission to go and conquer Europe uh, and, and see what is going on in this ocean business that appears to be on the other side? And Genghis Khan says, okay, you can go, but be back in two years. Jebe and Subede, with this small force, they just walk through Europe 
defeating every major European army, the great Georgian army, the great Russian army, the great Polish army. These are battle-hardened crusaders. They just walk all over Europe and they defeated every single European army without even wanting to. They just wanted to go and see what is going on. They just went back because they had promised countries that they would go back. Tell us about feigned retreat and how the Mongols did it so well. They would attack these great battle lines of the enemy and once the enemy started to engage them, they would pretend that they have been defeated and they would run away in great chaos, leaving behind all of their treasures. The army of the opponent would think, okay, let's now go and finish them off, and then we can come back and collect the, the loot. As they broke their formations and chased the Mongols, Mongols would have forces hidden further behind, and the forces that were running away would turn around on a dime, and they attack the uh, disarray of these enemy soldiers, and this is how they defeated many, many armies. They had a great system of communication with flags and with calls, with smoke signs. They had mastered this so well, and uh, they were such masters of their horses that they were able to create the impression of chaos where there was no chaos. Their aim was to destroy the army rather than uh, uh, you know, conquer ground. So they would go back uh, and, and try to murder as many of the, as the army and then systematically execute any members of the enemy that were taken captive in order to destroy the capacity of the army to resist. Killing all the soldiers is only one way to end a war. During World War I, British and German soldiers stopped fighting each other just because they wanted to sing Christmas carols together. Just saying. Anthropologist Margaret Mead says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. But how about you? Have you ever been a part of a small group that because of smarts, organization, and hard work made a big difference? Please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, you know that whole big thing. In the meantime, hope you have a fabulous week as you continue to Science Today.